Happy Tuesday, 10 at 10. I am your host, Richard Charpentier. And now you know the format. Uh, you send your questions through Bakerpedia, and we have 10 minutes to try to answer as many questions as we can. And we're trying to help you, you know, become better bakers and, and better at what you do. Because, you know, the more the more we learn all together, the, the, the better the industry will become. Uh, so just before we start, we, we got a lot of uh, questions on shelf life. And today's topic is really about shelf life altogether. Uh, and, you know, I'm all going to read through the same one. It's basically someone that says, hey, I have tried calcium. You know, I'm assuming calcium uh, propionate or calcium sorbate to increase up to 2.5%. But bread gets spoiled before five days. What may be, may need the cause and uh, potassium sorbate, 50 milligrams and GMS and amylase and Maggi mix, which are uh, ingredients, I don't know what it is. Sugar, salt, simple. Another question, potassium sorbate. Hi, I want to know if I can use it in cream puff fillings where I add, you know, fresh milk. Uh, whenever I make it, you know, chill it because it goes bad easily because you're using fresh milk. Uh, and, and there's another one. Uh, someone was asking on sodium uh, propionate and sodium or sor sorbic, the just a sort of sodium and uh, calcium and sodium. And then the last one with potassium sorbate. And they have two last questions. I'll come back. But to make it easy, we're going to talk for just a few minutes on shelf life. Everybody's trying to ask, I want shelf life extension. And how, what do I need to use as if there's a magic answer? First of all, Dr. Lynn Carson wrote a lot of information on antimicrobial microbial ingredients. You, you should definitely read and get yourself acclimated with its free information, go there. But here is it uh, on potassium sorbate. So just to understand whether it's calcium propionate or potassium sorbate, there are certain things to understand in, in order to know how much should I put into your cream filling, into your bread, into your, everybody's asking me, I don't know what you make. I don't know your process. A mold, when your product comes out of the oven, your product is completely sterilized and sanitized because that's the hardest work you're putting for, for forward. And then when your product cools and where it cools, at what temperature, what relative humidity, who's touching it, the fans and the open doors, that I can control. Because molds and yeast, any antimicrobial ingredients are coming from the outside. They're on you, they're everywhere. You know, how well do you clean? I don't know. So when you're using uh, a potassium, potassium sorbate, it comes in different form. It comes in calcium sorbate or it comes as sorbic acid. And usually the usage level also depends on which one you use. But overall, as a larger range is from 0.03% of the batter weight all the way to 0.4%. So, and then you have to understand if you're using a sorbic, what's the pKa that the effectiveness of which, P, which pH it reacts with the pH of your finished product. If it's a bread, it's lower, so you have a better chance. If it's a cake, meh, cake is mostly because of the baking powders, it's mostly around seven. So now you're out of luck because you know what? If you're trying to use a sorbate as a sorbic acid into a, a pH of seven, the uh, dis dissociation of your sorbic and how effectiveness is be 0.6%, almost nothing. And the more sugar you have in it and the less it works. And then there are certain strains of yeast that which sorbate does not work on. So you could put sorbic and still have yeast. What issue, what yeast strain are you dealing with that's growing on your cakes, on your product after a week? Uh, uh, then you're dealing with What's the effectiveness, you know, we talked about the pH in the solubility of the product in water at 212 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 100 degrees Celsius. What's the solubility, meaning becomes soluble, becomes liquid. And, and, and it's at 212, only 4% becomes soluble. Those are the facts. So that means at the boiling point, which to the point your product is baked, you're not going to get all the protection. 
you know, some people can talk about, hey, instead of putting into your product, create a potassium or sorbic acid spray that you can spray on your product that is better than to put into your product. So you have to think about how you do it. And that's why we're talking about product development and what you do when you do product development, because it takes time. It takes researching, gets into reading the books, understanding the chemistry, understanding microbiology, science and the art of, uh, of, of the art of science and uh, the art and science of baking come into place because you, there's how to make a cake and they have to use the science. Now we're dealing with shelf life, but those are great questions. I wanted to just put into one package just so you guys got a, a, a good sense that it's not easy to just recommend how much, how much to put into your product. I don't know your bakery. If you want to go into the how much, go through the Bakerpedia on the bakery resources and click on uh, the, the resources and get me as a consultant, you know, and, and we can talk about what's going on. But that's one way which would be easier than for me to try to just give you an answer. So now let's go back to the last two questions. Uh, somebody wants to make a dough for the dumplings wrapper, you know, like the uh, Chinese dumplings and that's sold in grocery stores. I want to follow the step, but excess water during gelatinization will make it a slurry and not dough. How to avoid it? Well, I don't know. I don't know what ingredients you're using. I need more help. What's your pH? What's your, I can help you, but I need to understand where, where are you and what do you need to do next? Because right now I would be guessing of what you're doing, what process, what heat are you applying? Where are your ingredients coming from? How do you how do you mix it, et cetera, et cetera? And then I can truly answer and give you a solid answer. And the last question, any any suggestion on the best preservative for crackers for prevention of fungal growth? Discoloration uh, helps in the texture and prolonged shelf life. As we said, I think sorbic acid will be a great ingredient to start with. There are other ingredients based, you know, if you want to be a little cleaner label, it's all about understanding what any strain, fungal strain you're going after and, and where, where are your pH, where's your water activity, where is your moisture uh, and, and pH, all those things, what you balance it and what's your packaging, then you can determine, you can get shelf life of three years if needed to, uh, but it's all about applying the science first uh, and then determining what your shelf life is going to be. But again, thank you very much for the for the great questions, and I appreciate it. But again, feel free, you know, share the information and uh, and and learn learn the science. And you have a happy Tuesday, happy baking. Take care, guys.